Hey everybody, welcome back to Daniel's Side of the Story, where I go through that week's chapter of the story. There it is. And I just share some of my thoughts, some reflections that I had as I read through that week's chapter. Just kind of a way to help give you a new perspective maybe as you read through. Maybe I noticed something that you didn't see. Um, just to help spark some discussion in your home or in your small group, or maybe just to help uh, for your own personal growth and development as we work through the story as a church family. This is week and chapter 26, and this week we're taking a look at Jesus' final moments leading up to the cross, as well as the cross itself. Uh, this, uh, in this video, though, in my reflections, I really want to take a moment to look at the final moments leading up to the cross and how Jesus chooses to spend his time knowing that he's about to be arrested. So at this point Jesus knows that he's about to be betrayed and he decides to take time to teach his disciples some important lessons that he wants them to know before the cross. So Jesus gathers some of his closest friends around the table in order to celebrate the Passover through the Passover meal, and he recognizes also that he doesn't have a lot of time left before his death. So what does he do? How does Jesus spend this time before the cross? Well, as we read here, we see uh, he kind of starts off by washing the feet of his disciples. And this may seem a little bit odd, like, okay, what it, I mean, even if you know the importance of foot washing in this time, I mean, it still seems kind of strange for Jesus to do, for Jesus to be the one to do it. And yet he intentionally decides that he's going to do this. And in this moment, what Jesus is doing is he's taking the form of a servant, and he's setting an expectation for his disciples, for those who follow him. We see, you know, Jesus, he explains himself and his actions to his disciples, and he says uh, this on page uh, 368. He says, You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. As I read through this passage, I, I see how Jesus is reminding his disciples that they need to live with a servant's heart, showing humility rather than pride or arrogance. I know um, I've, I've talked about it before, but there's this idea uh, that, I, that I've talked about in different messages in the past about how um, you can look back to m many different types of sin and the root problem of it comes down to pride, to selfishness. Stealing? I want that. Or jealousy, you know, why do they have that? I deserve that, right? Um, envy and all of these different types of sin have a root problem with pride. And Jesus is showing it's important, it's required to have an attitude of humility rather than pride. If you live your whole life trying to think, oh, it's all about me, you're going to have some troubles. So Jesus is taking the form of a servant by washing the feet of his disciples in order to set aside this idea of pride and say, no, no, if you're going to follow me, you need to follow my example and live humbly. Um, we also see, um, you know, at, because we're disciples of Jesus, you know, we need to follow this example, and he, he continues on as well. If we continue to read on page 368, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no servant 
is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And I'm reminded here, you know, when we read through uh, some of Paul's letters, he's writing and he, how does he describe himself? He says that he's a slave to Christ. And there's really this strong idea of, you know, as Jesus' disciples, as his followers, not just for the twelve, but for us as well, Jesus is our Lord. He's our master. We can't be greater than him. And that's why he's setting this example for us. We're able to see and recognize that there's this attitude of humility. If Jesus is willing to wash the feet of his disciples, we need to have a similar attitude as we go about our lives as well. And as a side note too, as I was reflecting on this passage, uh, I realized that there's another important lesson here that we can learn too. Jesus washed the feet of Judas. Judas hadn't left yet to betray Jesus. This whole idea of Jesus um, calling out Judas, really, he calls him out, and he sends Judas away, you know, all right, do what you need to do. Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed, and he made it clear to his disciples that he knew that there was a traitor in their midst, and yet he still showed love to Judas. He didn't wash everyone else's feet and then, you know, turn Judas aside, send him out, kick him out of the room and say, all right, go, go do what you need to do. No, he, he recognized that Judas is still here and he chose to love Judas, to show this attitude of mercy and grace to Judas, even though he clearly knew what was going to happen, what Judas was going to do. And as I, as I read through this, and as I was thinking about it, it, I can't help but wonder, you know, maybe Jesus is wanting to show us that we're also expected to show love and mercy to the people who hurt us, the people who betray us, and not just our friends. You know, we say, you know, we can see in Scripture, you know, it's even enemies show love to to their friends even the wicked will you know be kind to people who are good to them but it's our expectation as followers of Jesus to love our enemies as well and here we can see Jesus demonstrating that he knew what Judas was going to do and yet he still showed love and washed his feet as well uh, we also see, you know, after Jesus washes his disciples' feet and he describes the new covenant um, through, you know, the, the Lord's Supper or through communion as we now know it to be, um, Jesus then encourages his disciples, knowing that they're going to have a hard time ahead of them too. Now, undeniably, I would say that Jesus has the hardest job coming up. But he also recognizes that uh, the disciples are going to have a hard time too. Their Lord, their Master, their Messiah is going to die. So he takes the time to encourage them, even though he is under so much pressure and stress. We see later on, you know, he's so, he's so grieved by this moment. He's pleading with God please, Lord, take away this cup of suffering, if it's at all possible. Jesus is going through a hard time, too, yet he still recognizes that his disciples need to be encouraged. So he takes this moment and he recognizes uh, their hurt and their pain. And just, if you think about it, what that really means is just, wow, Jesus is showing so much love for his disciples. He also talks about how he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except going through him. We, we know that through Jesus, we're able to know our Father God. 
Jesus knows that his disciples are also going to be scattered. He knows that they're going to go in different directions and that there are going to be moments where they feel all alone in their homes. Isolated. Does that sound familiar? Jesus encourages them and says that there's going to be a comforter for them. He describes the Holy Spirit who is going to be with them and be an encouragement. Jesus talks about a lot more in this chapter and everything I've talked about is just leading up to the cross, leading up to his arrest and his trial. So I encourage you to uh, read through the chapter, even if you already have, and just be looking out for some of these different things that Jesus is trying to teach his disciples and us today as well. Uh, I've talked about just a few of the many different things we can learn through this passage. So I encourage you to reflect on this on your own time. Uh, and as you go through the chapter, ask God what he might be trying to teach you. Listen for his promptings. I think this is a undoubtedly a powerful moment in the upper story, and we also still have lots of excitement in the coming chapters. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope this gets you thinking about uh, how God is working throughout the story of Scripture, as well as how he's working in your own life today. Until next time, bye for now.